Public service announcement on behalf of the End Podcast. The following contains explicit language and adult themes throughout. Should this not reconcile with your sensibilities, book a lovely family holiday to Portugal and ask if you could spend some alone time when mummy and daddy nip out for a spot of dinner. Toodle pip! <laughs> yes! Yes! We are the End Podcast and this is the beginning of season two. Season two, we've managed the whole season and the raft of bonus episodes and other episodes that I never got around to editing because, you know, you can only love these guys so much and you have to keep them in place. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say, be careful whose fucking feet we piss on, dude. Don't piss her, murder, her, her parents off. Dude. You don't want to make bad <laughs> They just... Like, <laughs> right, we are the end pod. You can find us on all platforms, including the one you're currently listening to. But, uh, you know, if you fancy mixing it up, we are also on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google, 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 Boobies, Boobies, Boobies Podcasts. They're on Boobies Podcasts. <laughs> and we also have a decent amount of activity on Twitter and an Instagram account where we share loads of art and cool stuff like that. It's dead good. Have a look. You'll enjoy it. Tell them I sent you, because, you know, you'll get a discount. <laughs> Tim, you've been watching yeah. WandaVision. You've caught up this yeah. week. You previously yeah. thought it was horrible, like it was insulting your friends and family and setting yeah. fire to your pets. Well, as you guys know, I was deeply offended by the first episode. Now I'm through six plus. I'm into halfway through seven. And let me say, um, I don't actually change my opinion on the first episode. I still think it... Mm. I guess there are limits to my tolerance for pastiche. I get what they were doing. I just did not find it really that entertaining or funny. And I, I may have to revisit this, but I didn't see enough little Easter eggs that would yeah. propel me forward if, if I weren't already. I mean, I hated that first episode. So I don't think there's anything they could have done that would prevent me from continuing to watch. So much has developed now extremely compelling. The ways in which Vision and Wanda are pulling apart over all this yeah. is like very, very deeply human, I think. I just think it's now like a 10. I had it at a one, now it's a 10. Uh, who were the Captain, I couldn't, couldn't tell you, directed Captain Marvel. It was a man and a woman though, wasn't it? I don't... Your blank faces say it all. They were famous to say they had about 40 minutes worth of script to play with. The rest of it mm -hmm. was Marvel doing the set pieces. And I think mm -hmm. James Gunn said similar. Someone was actually sarcastic to him on Twitter about this, saying maybe not all up and coming directors want to get told what to do or something like that. And James Gunn said, look, I had like 40, 50 minutes. I did what I wanted to do with that. If that's not enough, then you're not a good enough direct. Yeah. Like if you can't yeah, work I, with Marvel, who can you work with? Like, totally. Can... Matt, you were talking about Paul Bettany's dramatic skills so are good. on like full display in some so of those. So good. He's trying to pull out from under the, the dome or whatever it is, whatever yeah, this, and he's, and he's struggling. He sees his body being pulled apart. He, has, he doesn't really understand what's happening to him. The looks on his face, and that is itself a set piece, but the way in which he conveys the emotions in his body movements and on his face are yeah. just incredible. I'm so delighted. I don't know how, if you guys are Darcy fans. She was so funny. People don't really like her very much, but I love that character. I so I was like, so he is buff. She's so good. She's so That's good. With both her and Wu, that with Wu, they didn't just turn him into this fucking idiot, this incompetent buffoon. He's high level FBI. He's going to have some skills. And then when he right. goes straight up dark side on those other agents, he's completely competent, completely confident, but he's still like a bit of a hooks. Yeah. It's great as well with Darcy that they've still got this playful side to her, but she's like a doctor. She's a leader in a the field. They yeah. still allow them to have strengths and to have personality. Yeah. Exactly. And then you, just because yeah. these people yeah. are highly trained and intelligent doesn't mean mm. they have to be boring and dull and lack a sense of humor or any fun personality trait you know mm. that's what's great about it just yeah. out well, of interest I, Tim, what was the moment that made you say i've got this fucker wrong we've okay. got a game on around here boys so i'm into it in episode two and i'm getting further and further into it in episode three but the episode where monica snaps yes. back yes right the blip in the drum and into the marvel opening credit music yeah. i was like fuck yeah. i was so it's like a fucking hymn to me I, it's like religious so <laughs> When it drops in there where she figures out what's happening. Oh my God, this is like the greatest TV show I've ever seen. It felt cinematic, felt theatrical. That is one of the best mm. first half an hour of any MCU film. That opening scene in the hospital, I've not yep. seen something as brave as that since the opening scenes with um, Bruce Wayne in uh, Dawn of Justice. I don't think we'd seen 
what that chaos would be like when the people come back, right? Like mm. to just blip back into existence. There's gonna be people around there who are who have been there the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the hospital scene and how just unbelievably chaotic and disorienting that would be. It captured it perfectly. I mean, there'd be people mid-surgery still opened up, right? Yeah. Everything. Like just everything. You just brought up something that, that has just blown my mind apart. I never thought about the people who were like active. I mean, there's 8 billion people on earth. There's people who are actively in surgery or somebody who like had fallen to the bottom of a cliff basin. Yeah. That's yeah. awful. Yeah. Divers, you're 600 feet like... down, the fucking pressure, boom, your lungs explode. But I'll take that one step further. There's only one point in a 365 and a quarter day cycle that the earth is even in the same place. Mm -hmm. They're looking that mm -hmm. they didn't just get blipped, didn't just get in the middle of the vastness of space. space. Yeah, Holy yeah, shit. right. I mean, you would think they'd come back to earth, but if, I mean, if they just go back to the exact point in space and time that they yeah. were when they get blipped back in, dude, that is, I mean, oh, that's, I've, I've just <laughs> never, I've never yeah. thought about it like that. Like, fuck, dude, that's intense. Look at the scene of Monica coming back. She doesn't come back all in one moment, right? Like, her her consciousness yeah. seems to appear and her, her hands are still forming. Like, imagine what that would be like if that happened to you. In and detects himself fading away, right? Remember that? So yeah, it would make yeah. sense that it would come back the same way. And she well, is so good. Forget she the woman is so up. good. But she's so heroic. Oh, God, let's just go down that path. She's basically what Captain Marvel could have been. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. just yeah. not without yeah. this sassy attitude, Captain Marvel that you can actually get behind. And she yeah. seems to have some gravitas. That's the thing. The one we would have got if she was played by Katie Sackhoff. Mm. Who's Katie mm -hmm. Sackhoff? Battlestar Galactica. From Battlestar Galactica. Ah. Oh, she's the blonde, Hell the blonde yeah. lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just wanted to add in what he was saying about Paul Bettany. I, I I have seen him progress as an actor since A Knight's Tale that when I bought yeah. tickets to go see Shrek and my friend's mom took us to go see Knight's Tale instead. And like he was in that and all the way to this, like seeing him co go from that like naked character in the field to fucking vision deteriorating is some mm. of the best, like not, not just progress because he was always a good actor, but you just get to see his whole range and everything that he's done. And I really do think Paul Bettany is one of the most underrated. We're talking about him now, but we should have been talking about him five years ago. The only I criticism wanna... I would have, and I think it's why the first oh. two were so soggy. He's clearly not a comedic actor. Everything that you see, you don't understand, this is how good One Vision is. Everything that you see and the bits that you hate are supposed to be. The bits that you hate because they're not comedic is because they're not comedic. And it's mm. not supposed to land. The jokes don't, that miss and the bits that kind of don't feel right, they are supposed, I'm telling you, it is so yeah. intentional, it's going to flip your fucking wig. I'm on the yeah. same Let me propose something then. Let me propose something. How would you then reconcile situation A with situation B was that it's not supposed to be bad and they just did it badly? How would you distinguish between the two? <laughs> the, the, the distinguishing bit is when you see them act as themselves, and as their characters, oh my God, it's a total yeah. transition. That's not I just funny. mean the comedic elements. They clearly aren't comedic actors. And I think that you can backwards engineer a reason for it, but I just don't think they have comedic <laughs> chops. And I think you see that by how well Catherine Hahn does. She yeah. obviously didn't get the memo of doing it poorly then. One other moment that really like got me to attention is in that scene where she wants to help out by taking care of the twins, right? Mm, yeah. And she's like yeah. the jazzer size, and it's must have been the eighties episode. Then she kind of breaks out of like, that character yeah, and says, yeah, "Should I?" Do yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh my god!" Not only was that like a great scene, but it's also like shows how good she is because she can mm. do that. She can ham it up. Has great comedic chops, but that was deeply disconcerting. On that we have switch. to mention the guy on the phone as well, Vision's workmate, when he. But that's what I was gonna say. So he good was amazing oh pristine. my god pristine amazing. episode seven then so we finally get to see one of the worst kept secrets ever it is agatha harkness yeah she is the engineer of this world so she doesn't mm. come in and out thing she's a director she's playing the strings do you think playing on the words that you've used in which case you would say wanda is the screenwriter but agatha harkness is the director for sure. She's a showrunner, she's, she's, she's behind the camera. Yeah. She's oh, the right yeah. That's me. actually her voice that has been modified to drop down a couple of octanes to make it sound like a oh, man's yeah, voice. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love that. 
I think there was Scarlet Witch one that created the X, but uh, Agatha is here to understand why and how. And that's why she sent Pietro, the Pietro yeah. lookalike. He spent all episode asking her, how oh, did you do it? How oh, does it work? Mm. And yeah, that- I think he's a henchman too. One of the theories going is that Mr. Scratch is her son. Is it Nicholas Scratch? And he's Nicholas actually, Scratch. And he's actually the bunny, and he's changing himself into Quicksilver as well. The bunny's more than the bunny. The bunny's got to be more than the bunny, right? Yeah, no, no. The, the bunny's definitely more. I, the, oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> there, there was a point in that, like, I don't know, I feel a bit emotional anyway, because it's been a, a draining week. Seeing like Wanda go through the depression and just feel like she was losing grasp. And so that was kind of preening me. But then when Monica Rambeau looks at the hex and just runs for it and everyone's like, no. And then when it's tearing apart and she's getting all these voices from Carol, she's getting voices from her mum, sheer determination. And then when her eyes went blue and she was turning into spectral yeah. photon, oh my God, I think I'm going to cry. She's been beat from the second that she got back and she's this massively positive influence on the series. And then to see her get her powers, I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I think I love this program. I think I think I love this program. <laughs> and when she was punched down, when she lands, she has the same posture as Carol Danvers. Uh, superhero landing. Superman like uh, yeah. posture with the fist down. When she does the superhero landing, that's yeah. when one the new. You know, <laughs> <a> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she looks shook. And I love the bit where when you have an argument that you don't really want to turn into a fight, so you're walking away going, come on then, come yeah. on, come on you fucker, you want to come and say this over here? As you're walking away and your mate's holding you back and you go, don't fucking let me go. Do not let me go. <laughs> when that scene happens, Agatha shows up really quick to get her really out of shot. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but her. who was behind her? The post office guy. He is yeah. everywhere. Who the fuck is this guy? He's gonna I think be someone. He's, just a, guy. He's, I think he's just a guy. I'm telling you. I think it's just some Hollywood actor that's got dirt on one of the producers, so they throw him in the background there. Or he's gonna release these fucking videos. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't I forget, want... I've got that video of you. <laughs> yeah, I've hit on a bunch of good points, especially the Nicholas Scratch thing. That was one of the big things I was gonna bring up. I definitely think he is playing the role of Quicksilver. I definitely think we're gonna see some crazy stuff. Also, what was y'all thinking? When they zoomed in on, which I now know is a cicada and not a locust. I what, think, what were y'all thinking about that? I think it's, see- insects are just creepy. Cullen Bunn uses them in a bunch of his comics. They're just creepy. I think there is definitely ways to look at it, but I, I think people like to deconstruct well, and, a little bit too much. I don't think there's anything the, in it. The only reason why I pointed it out is because they specifically zoomed in on it. And this goes yeah. back to, what is it, mm. Chekhov's gun? It, it implies historically uh, the devil. He is, he is always, he's, the, yeah, he's yeah. the Lord of Flies. He's the King of Locusts. And so I'm thinking this whole time, everybody's been talking about Mephesto and talking about Mephesto and talking about Mephesto. And I really think that them zooming in on that cicada was them showing us that, hey, that, that this whole Mephesto thing was misdirection, Agatha mm-hmm. Harkness. Holy fuck. It was Agatha all along. There is no Mephesto. There's ties to Mephesto. There was a guy called Jeremy Johns, and he basically said in one of his videos, I don't know what the twins are about. I'm not going to go and do Google and bring myself up to date and then pretend like I've known about it all along. And I think there's a lot of this almost kind of like connoisseurist, immediate research, and then people are like, oh yeah, it's Memphisto. 99.99% of people didn't know who Agatha Harkness were before the series started, yeah. but yet now 99.9% of people were absolutely sure it was Agatha Harkness. <laughs> okay, we, we now know it's, a, what's it, a Casada? Is that what they're called? A cicada. A cicada, yeah. A cicada. When really there's a degree that the producers might have just wanted a creepy fucking insect and that's the one that came. Once it showed that it was Agatha as the villain, if it would have just been a room full of like insects kind of moving around or flies like they did in in The Exorcist, I feel like it would have been different, but it was a single insect like on a window that they zoomed in and made it. I was a theater nerd, man, so like the whole Chekhov's gun is like, my reasoning behind thinking and, that that and was just, significant. And just to back you on that, on the Chekhov gun principle, and I've seen videos where they've broken down the files, zoomed in, got the code yeah, yeah. number and goes, this relates to whatever the fuck it is. 
So there isn't anything erroneous. Okay, the show let me just bring one thing up before we move on. I saw one breakdown. There is a series of numbers and letters on the top of a license plate. Mm. One of them related it to Stanley's birthday and the other one used it for a, an equivalent of a Pantone colour chart. And it was the hex colour chart. Um, sequence of numbers was also green there's two completely logical reasons here one's stanley's birthday one's a hex color chart reference to the color green and it's kind of like well they can't both be true Wh- whichever way you look at it i think that it must be an absolute screenwriter's dream to know that never ever ever will you ever create anything that is going to be scrutinized to such detail that every single thing that you put into every scene is going to be fully utilized and, and not just wasted or waiting for somebody to find it's got to be a scriptwriter's dream 